Uh, so what type of reaction would happen here? You know? Because we have a uh, third degree alpha carbon and a core nuclear file. Good. Now, the table specifically says there that would be SN1 slash E1. Now, in the past, we've only been drawing SN1 because that's the major. Uh, but to wrap up today, we should also see how to draw E1 because you can be tested on that as well. So now, this time, let's draw both the SN1 and the E1 mechanisms because remember, they're both going to happen here. Um, just for the review, let's start with the SN1 reaction. So let's show uh, what the SN1 mechanism would be, and then we'll do the E1. Okay. Let me just point out some technicalities there. Okay. Um, it looks like in your picture, you drew this as the product. That's correct. Okay, good. Now, notice that um, you did something that students oftentimes do, which you drew a little tiny bond between the carbon and the oxygen, so tiny that it would be easy to forget that there's a bond there at all and think that the oxygen is just right here and actually lose the carbon. So it's good to take our time and actually draw a nice full-size bond between all the atoms. Because one of the most common student mistakes is accidentally adding or dropping carbons when we get sloppy with the bottom line notation. Okay, uh, I'm just focusing on the technicality because the basics there were exactly right. By the way, notice it's, uh, if you wanted to here, who's going to take this hydrogen? Well, I could just show the iodide reaching out from over here and taking oh. the hydrogen. Or if you want to, you can draw in the iodide over here and draw it in. Either of those is fine. Either of those is completely acceptable. So the way you drew that was just fine. All right, so like I said, those are just minor technicalities. It looks like you got that product uh, exactly right. By the way, are we forming a stereo center here? No. So is there one product or two? One product. Good. But hopefully we're going to think about that on every problem. We always have to check whether we're forming a stereo center. All right, now we have to do the E1 reaction. Uh, if you want, you can try that on your own, or if you want, I can just show you how that works. Okay. How many steps do you think there's going to be in an E1 reaction? That's right. Um, and what's going to happen in the first step? The leaving group is going to leave. That's right, period. By the way, what happens in the first step of an SN1? The leaving group leaves. Right. So it's not too hard to remember the first step of E1 because it is exactly identical to the first step of an SN1. The first step of E1 is exactly identical to the first step of a SN1. So we've actually already showed the first step of the E1. I'm just going to redraw this intermediate over here. So here we have our intermediate and the iodide that left. Just like we would have gotten from the first step of the SN1. Okay. All right, now uh, let's go back to E2. Remember that in E2 we drew three arrows. 
So there were, must have been three things happening. So you can, can you describe to me in words, what were the three things happening that those three arrows from E2 represented? Um, well, the, in the first part, the, the first arrow, the leaving group leaves, and then right. the, yeah, the carbon uh, cation, and then you... Now you're thinking about E2, right? Correct. Yeah, actually, so, I want, so we don't have a carbon cation for E2. Remember that in E2, everything oh, no, happens no. simultaneously. Okay, yeah, I just so want to review for a second the E2 right. reaction we saw previously. Uh, so you have, what you have the you have the base grabbing the uh, you have the arrow from the base to the beta uh, proton. Right. So the first thing that happens is the base takes uh, a beta hydrogen. Good. Correct. And then the bond between the hydrogen and the beta carbon uh, breaks and forms a pi bond with Good. the alpha carbon. Good. So the second thing that happens is that the electrons that used to be bonded to the beta hydrogen form a pi bond. Good. Correct. And, um, and the third thing is, um, so the first thing is grabbing the beta hydrogen. Correct. Second thing is forming the pi bond. And the third arrow represents, um, can we look at a picture of a previous E2 reaction? There we go. First arrow is grabbing the proton. Right. Remember, it'd be better to draw bigger, uh, bigger bonds okay. between things. Right. And the second arrow is forming the pi bond. And what was our third arrow representing there? And the leaving group. The leaving group leaving. Okay. All right. Well, the three things that happen in E2 are the same three things that have to happen in E1. It's just that they happen sequentially rather than simultaneously. Well, we've already had the leaving group leave here. Yes. So what's left to have happen? Um, the base. Right? And then the leaving group's going to leave. Remember, that already happened. Oh, I'm sorry. Remember, that the leaving group's already left here. Okay. So let me actually write this down on the board. So we'll have here in E2, the three things that happen are leaving group leaves, pi bond forms, Base takes beta hydrogen. Okay. Um, so here's the three things that happen in an E2, and these all happen simultaneously. Okay. But in an E1, we have two steps. First, the leaving group leaves, and then secondly, the pi bond forms, and the base takes. The beta hydrogen. Okay. Same three things, except now they're in two separate steps. Okay, so it helps to write it this way. One thing that was confusing about the way I was describing that before is when I was describing it before, I was always describing this, then this, then yeah. this. But maybe it's actually better to describe the leaving group leaving first over here. Even though these are all happening simultaneously, that makes it easier to think of the leaving group leaving in a first separate step in the E1. Okay. So this is maybe the best way to write these out in words. Okay. So the first step of E1 is when the leaving group leaves, and we've already shown that. We've shown the leaving group leaving. So what is left to have happen in our, in our second step here um, for E1? The stability of the carbon cation. I'll, I'll admit it, what, what, what reaction should happen now. So we, we, we need to say what reaction is going to happen at this point. Well, remember, we're trying to reproduce what happened in an E2. Um, in, an, uh, in an E2, these three things would happen simultaneously. In an E1, first this happens, and then this happens. Uh, and my question was, after the leading group leaves, what's left to have happen in E1? Well, this is what's left. This is what we want to have happen next. Um, so what should happen? Well, the pi bond needs to form. And the base needs to take the beta hydrogen. So we just need to draw arrows that show those things happening. So can we draw some arrows that would show these two things happening here? Um, why don't we start by showing the base taking the beta hydrogen? Two beta hydrogens. So, so let's label the beta carbons. Well, we have three. Yeah, we have three beta carbons, but they are all equivalent. Okay. So it doesn't matter which one you focus on. Uh, again, you might see some problems where the beta hydrogens were not equivalent, but that's a little more advanced that we're going to get into today. Okay. For today, I'm only going to give you equivalent beta hydrogen, uh, beta carbons. So we can just pick any beta carbon you like and focus on that one. So let's say you can focus on whichever beta carbon you want, and we want to show the base taking the beta hydrogen. Good. 
And what's the other thing that has to happen when we need to form that pi bond? Okay. Um. Oh, by the way, who should our base be? You use the iodide here. That, that's not a terrible thought to use the iodide. But after all, the original yeah. base here was the water. So it would be more conventional to show the water. Yeah. Yeah. There's something to be said for how you drew it, but it's conventional here to show the water. The same thing that would have been in the nucleophile in the SN1. Right. Now we need one more arrow that shows uh, the pi bond forming. That's the arrow. Okay. 